Welcome to Charge Heads, my name's Tim, and we're here again with Nick, Eco Classics, in the cow shed. In the cow shed, yeah. yeah. Although the cow shed has extended. It has expanded that way, yeah, so yeah. we've got another couple of units now. You've got this wonderful car in front of us here. Yes, 356, wow. sort of 50s, uh, early Porsche, right? So we're working with a partner on this, Haley Abbott, 150 kilowatt motor in this one. Yeah. Um, it's got a relatively small battery, it's about... Uh, it's nine modules, so it's about 20, 21 kilowatt hour. Okay, right. Just because there's not a huge amount of space in the car, right? Yeah. Plus, we, we did try and put a larger battery in, and it showed out the back of the car. It didn't look right, so we made it quite a bit smaller. One of the main reasons why we're here today is to pick up uh, this little beauty. Now, there's no, no particular name for it, but what? it's obviously a DC to DC. It's a pink bag. It's a pink bag, <laughs> yeah, sorry, there is something in this. Sorry, let's have a look. Get, get that out. Uh, Christmas is over now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no, this is this is the Christmas present. So it's the, it's, the, it's a seven. It's basically a seven kilowatt charger. Okay. Okay. Uh, but it has added functionality. It's got DC DC built in as well. Right. Uh, and then on top of that, it's capable of outputting two forty volt AC. Right. So it'll okay. do about between four and five kilowatt AC out. Okay. Wow. So we're we're starting to fit into things like Land Rovers. It's yeah. Perfect. Right. You're in the middle of a field somewhere, and you want to get out your whatever tool, mm. um, or boil a kettle, or yeah. run your fridge, whatever that, whatever yeah. it might be. Chainsaw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have that capability now. So you, you, char you charge through the normal Type 2 port, but you actually, you actually come out through the Type 2 port as well. Okay, so you charge in the Type 2 and it comes out there as well. Yeah, so you'd, you'd need uh, an extension lead that comes out of here and then pulls it out to a three, yep. fused three pin. Okay. We're, we're starting to fit this to everything, right? It's um, we, we've just moved source to, to this one because it's got so much more functionality and it's about half the size of the, the original um, charger that we're using. So things are coming down in, in size as well, right? So reduced, and reduced weight and easier to package. Every, I say everything that we build now has this, this, this uh, charger in it. So I'm very excited. I know it's not here today, but you've got your Foundation E race car. Um, yeah, that's quite an exciting project. Very exciting, With, um, yeah. RSR technology up at Snetterton, they, they designed the car, we've designed the electrical installation. Yeah. Um, and it's being promoted by BRSCC, so they want to run a series next year. Brilliant. Um, so we're just going through with uh, MS uh, Motorsport UK yeah. and with the FIA to get the car certified. That's, that's so brilliant hopefully news. we'll have six to eight cars on the grid sort of middle of next year and then a full series the year after. This could be, I know there's the Formula E and you know, there's the Extreme yeah, this, this E. Is, this, is, this is, you know, sort of grassroots, grassroots, yeah. grassroots. I mean, yeah, okay, the car's not, it's, 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 it's about an 80 grand This car, could be right? the beginning but of really getting a lot more electric um, There is you know, nothing else series. out there, right? No, exactly. It, 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 when I looked into it, I was actually really surprised that there was nothing else out there. Mm. So it seemed like a big, opportunity, a big hole in the marketplace it's a that, game we could, changer. that we could exploit. No, so, definitely. And, um, you know. And, and, it's, and it's built on pretty much the same components that we use in everything else, right? Yeah. So that reduction box that we talked about before, mm. that we use in the Mini, yeah. we've just turned that round and used it in there. That's the one that we put in the back of the Lotus 7. Yeah. So it's stuff that we've developed that we're now going to be you know, reusing. Control system's the same. So we use the control, same control system, same BMS and everything, right? Yeah. Same charger. Same battery module, so it's all production parts, so it should give it perfect reliability. We're giving people a two-year warranty on the car as well. Yeah. So, no, so in terms of you know, normal race car, you rebuild the engine at least once a year. Yeah, no, That's good point. Huge cost, right? So, so hopefully it will make it more economical as well. And uh, what is the what's the range? I'll, I'll get the stats. Uh, I'll uh, put them so up on the screen. Yeah. But what what are the kind of basic stats on so it's, speed it's, it's of charge? It's very similar to this actually. Okay. It's got uh, it's got the same gearbox. It's yep. got the same. It's got the same everything actually. Okay. It's got similar similar battery modules. So it's about 20, 20 kilowatt hours. Yep. Runs up to four fifty volts peak. Yeah. One hundred and fifty kilowatt motor. Um, yeah. Not sixty in three and a half seconds, something like that. Have you done much testing um, in it yourself? I personally haven't driven it. No. Okay. Uh, I but bet we've you can't had, wait, we've right? had a couple of test sessions. One mm -hmm. up at Snetterton. One. At, so we ran at um, Brands Hatch the Formula Ford Festival. Oh, okay. dem demonstration laps there. Oh, got to the um, that, so we, so we've gone down the route of uh, a 20 kilowatt hour battery which will support a 20 minute race. Yep. 
and then you can charge it in about three hours. So in, in a day, you could run from uh, qualifying in the morning, mm. race at lunchtime, and then a race at the end of the day. That's kind of the, the thinking behind it. How many are going to be on the grid, do you think, to start? To start with, probably six to eight cars, I would think, which, which is doable, right? But then when you get to 20 cars, mm. it becomes a little bit more of a struggle. Yeah, yeah. But hey... You know, it's, it's early, the beginning. It's, it's early days, it, right? Absolutely. And, and the circuits need to respond, right? They need mm. they need to have the infrastructure there because it's and this is it's the coming. beginning. No, it sounds good. Well, thank you for taking us through the stats on this, showing us this wonderful Porsche. Uh, shall we go and have a look? See what else is in the yeah. Uh, let's go and have, a, have a look uh, next door. Good. Let's go. This is a thing of beauty, as uh, they like to call it in the trade. What well, stag? Absolutely. Thing of yeah, it's British. Yep. Doesn't matter if it's ugly. Still well, we got rid of that <laughs> bloody old V8 out of here. Never heard good things about those. No, engines. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't have that much experience of them. But yeah, you never hear great things about them, do you? No. Anyway, this is going, or it's, it's gone electric, actually. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, it's not going back again now. So this is uh, Les's car, which right. is featured in quite a lot of ad down at the barns, right? Yeah, so, down so at the barns, check out the... Uh, uh, YouTube channel. 120 kilowatt motor with two to one reduction box in this. So we're getting about 300, uh, sorry, 600 Newton meters out the back of this. Wow. Okay. Um, it's got a 44 kilowatt hour pack in here. Yep. We've done things like uh, power steering, right? Because it originally had power steering. So we've got oh, right. uh, okay. a, a class Mercedes power steering pump. Right. This one's going to have air conditioning as well because Les, Les keeps sticking everything on it. Right. That's all, that's all part of the fun. And you said that the 44 kilowatt hour battery you get, uh, when we were talking earlier, gets you about circa 180 miles? Yeah, we reckon about 180 miles on this, I would that's, think. That's really, really good. Uh, do you know what yeah. the weight is going to be once it's... Lots. Lots. <laughs> um, all the to be honest, I, I, I don't know. We, we will corner weight it. So at the moment, we're trying to get everything into the car yep. so it can go away and have the doors fitted and all that sort of thing, right? So, right. so that... Um, because we've got, we've got a very specific time frame to get that done, and then it goes off to the trimmer. It'll come back to us for final finishing. Same motor, right? 120 kilowatt motor that we use in most of our conversions. Yeah. Although we've just updated that to 150 kilowatt. How many conversions have you done with that motor so far? Because you've been using that one for uh, a while. Yeah, we're probably on 25, I would think. Right. And reliability-wise, been good so far? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. absolutely. So the 150 kilowatt is actually the same motor with rare earth magnets, and yeah. we've linked it up with a new inverter. Right. Right. So, so it'll, it'll do peak of about 200 kilowatt. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to push stuff along, and that, that's what we're using Land Rovers, right? So you've got big old Land Rover there. Yeah. Stick that through a two, 2.9, three to, three to one reduction box. Yeah. 900 newton meters into the transfer case, and and it will yeah. You get pretty quick Land Rovers. Yeah, there. definitely. And uh, in terms of the instruments, uh, how are you going to be? Uh, oh, this thing's got. We'll, so we'll, we'll drive the analog instruments, right? But it's got quite a large digital screen, right? Going into the sun visor. That's Les's latest thing. So we just caddied all that up. So that, that's the latest. I think plan. Le last time I was here, Les's latest thing was lots of different noises. Is it? Is it going to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to have. Yeah. It's going to have. Yeah, it's going to have a noise system as well, front and oh, rear speakers dear. and all that sort of thing. I want so, to talk. So it's got. It's got. I mean, once this thing's finished, it's going to be. It is going to be. It's going to be quite a showcase for us. But it's. It's also going to be quite a. A phenomenal car. I look forward to, mm. and I'm sure everyone so else. So do will. I. <laughs> <laughs> well, ain't leaving. No, well, no, no, because I don't. I, I, you know, it's it's going to be yeah. continuously developed. I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, so just as stuff I'll comes. Show on. off what you guys can do, which is, you know, from from where I'm standing, some awesome work. So no, thanks for showing us that. Mm. Let's go and have a look at what else you've got in the cow shed. So last time we were here, I had the uh, joy of driving that wonderful green Porsche. Oh, the 911, yeah. Oh, okay. that was, yeah, uh, yeah the design. It's up for sale level. now, if you want to buy oh, it. Okay, how much? Yeah. I think it's up for about 160. Okay, huh? yeah. yeah, I'll just start saving. Get on the paper, <laughs> another paper round. Um, yeah, so design 911 got that up for sale at the moment. So it's, well, I mean, comparable to what the Everati's up for, where it's, yeah, yeah, I, you know. Yeah, good value for money, right? Absolutely, yeah. and I can say, tell you that it, yeah, it goes well and sounds good. This here, this is a smaller version of the drive unit, if yeah. you like. So, I mean, that drive unit, to be honest, it was it, it, it drove quite a lot more changes in the car, right? It had right. those great big tyres on it. 
I, I yeah, mean, they it was, were it was good, right? It was three and a half seconds to 60. The thing was a rocket, or it mm. is a rocket ship, right? Yeah. But it needs a big battery to drive it. It needs sort of hundreds. Uh, sorry, it needs about 70 kilowatt hour pack to drive what, it. What was in the green portion so of it? Was six, it was 70 kilowatt. Right. So the idea is to try and get something a little bit smaller. Yeah. A little bit more, and of course we're looking at targas and things like that, convertibles, which haven't necessarily got the, the structural rigidity. No. No. And you don't need to go and do the big wheel arches on it and all that sort of thing. So we're just looking for something that would drop into the car at a reasonable cost. So something more efficient rather than having something big to tune down, basically. Yeah. yeah. And obviously more space for, you know, all the bells and whistles. Yeah. So oh, cool. we're, we're, we're starting to fit this into another 911, which we can just go and have a look at right. in a minute. Um, so that's 160 kilowatt nominal motor. Wow. Um, but fully integrated, right? 16,000 RPM. It will give us about uh, 3,000 Newton meters at the drive shaft. Wow. So the other one had about 4,000. Yep. Right, and then typically for something like the Stag, it'll come out about 1,800 Newton meters. Just, just to, so, so you can see that, that progression of, of torque. What sort of performance would you get out of something like this? So we're, we're aiming to, to get just under five seconds. The car will have CCS, it'll have a sort of a 50 kilowatt hour pack in it, so it's not, not massive, but it's enough to, to get you. And what do they predict, what do you predict the range will be roughly with the 50 about, kilowatt? About hour? 200. Okay, so that's good. In terms of top end on a racetrack? 130. Yeah. Yes. Which is more than enough, yeah. right? I mean, when would you ever want more than that? I mean, it's much more of a cruising car. You see the car in a minute, right? It's, yeah. it's Targa. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's, it's a lovely car, right? It's not something that you're going to be herring around in all the time. And what sort of cost to a build with this type of drive unit with a 50 kilowatt hour pack? So we, we'd, we'd be trying to get it to around about 40k. Wow, that's really impressive. Mm. So I mean, we've got, you know, this, this is the, the rear subframe <coughs> for it. The yep. motor drops in there. You've got a battery pack that goes on top. Um, and just bolts onto the original mount. So we've got the designs there, it's done. So hopefully we've got somebody coming in starting next week and their objective is in four weeks to have that car running. Wow. So that's the plan. Very exciting. You've got something strange and green in the corner here. It's not easy being green. That's probably not the best it's not, description. It's not Kermit the Frog. No, it's not. No, let's go and have a look at it. Let's go and have a look. This is a system that we developed. Yeah, it just nice. nice. It's got a 70 kilowatt hour pack in this. Right. So it's basically just a big battery that will go in the back of a van. Yep. And then you can go and charge cars that have run out of charge around uh, out in the countryside somewhere, right? Not me, touch wood. You can either charge it up using seven kilowatt or CCS. Wow, okay. Right, so you can go, you go to a CCS charge station and plug it in. And what, what will it be able to pull? Uh, this will pull about 70 kilowatt. Wow, okay. Um, and then we can do 240 volt AC out. So yep. you then plug in something like this, which would allow you to do pretty much anything, type two. Right. Right, okay, it's only seven kilowatt, but it will get somebody enough charge to, to get them home. Yep. Or, this is DC out. Yep. It goes into this machine, which will then do... This looks more like it, yep. This will then do a 30 kilowatt DC fast charge, and you can either put CCS on, yep. or we can put a uh, cheddar mode. Okay. It's aimed at that AA RAC rescue service, I think, really. Well, I think there's, there's a couple of cars I'd like to see next door. Yeah, yeah, let's go have a look next door. Perfect, let's go have a look. So here we are in the... It's the third, third, the third cow, cow shed. Third cow shed, yeah. And this is a Defender build you've got going on. I'll tell you what, what I love about this build and all the builds that I ever see you do, Nick, is it looks so OEM, so factory. You know, it's unbelievable the time and work and you know attention to detail that well, you've got here a couple of reasons for that one i am from the OEM exactly world, right that helps um <laughs> and the other thing is it, it's really about you know taking pride in that attention to detail and mm. and, and detailing it up in cad yeah right? so all of this is in cad we 3d scan the, scan the cars and we can engineer the whole thing mm. before we actually build it into the car i know not every conversion place does cad um, so yeah, it's good to. Uh, good it to it know. just helps us because the big 
benefit there is we can then just make it again. Yeah. Right? You, c you can find that there are problems, right? Clearly, not, ev not everything goes together that easily, right? Especially first time round. But you can I go back. Know, TVR conversion's been a breeze, <laughs> mate. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Um, but you can then go back, modify the CAD, and you know that next time you're not going to come up against that issue. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the other thing is it allows us to replicate it. And that door's making a lot it of noise. It is a bit windy today. <laughs> it so is, it's <clears> pretty <throat> horrible out there. I, I do love sound uh, being perfect. I think this is our third Land Rover. But it's been restored. Yeah. Right? So, so uh, chassis has been done. All the bodywork's been done. No, that's lovely. But it's got the original transfer box. Right. That runs... Uh, one, this is a 120 kilowatt, although most of them we do is a 150 kilowatt. Yeah. And runs through a 2.7 to 1 reduction box straight into the transfer case. So you get to keep your, your diff lock yep. and your high and low range and everything, right? So you, you keep all the original functionality of the car there. Nice. It's only got one battery pack in this car. Right. So in the, in the other cars that we've done, where we get sort of 70, potentially 100 kilowatt hour pack, we, we start putting packs underneath the car. Right. right. One generally under the driver's seat and one under the rear of the car. Yeah. But this, this has got 50 kilowatt hour pack here in the front. Okay. We've done a couple of other different things. Uh, this has got an air-cooled charger and an air-cooled DC-DC on it. Oh, okay. Just, what, just that? Just keep, keep the cost down. Right. Uh, and, and again, it's the duty cycle that it's going to run, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's going to be small journeys around Jersey, so it just felt it didn't really need that much. In there. And I take it you, there's no modifications of the chassis or anything like that? Oh, it's, no. Oh, no. Right, no, no. They're, Don't get involved know, in that, do we? No. It's got to the point now where it's, it's ridiculous. You, you, know, you just cannot touch anything on the car. And how many classic cars out there don't have a hole drilled in them somewhere? <laughs> right? Uh, Not mine. And under DVLA rules, that would be uh, a major modification of the, the chassis, and you'd, you'd lose the registration document mm. and the V5 and have to go through and register it as a Q plate. But it's something to be really, really careful with now, right? Document everything on the car before you start. Yep. Anything that's been modified and make the customer aware of that. Yeah. And then make sure you just don't, don't touch the original frame. Now, and, and do you know what? That brings me swiftly on to the, the Red Beast. Oh, the E-Type. The e yeah. yeah. So yeah. this was the E-Type that we were checking out this time, well, last year, oh, yep. probably a bit, probably a bit warmer than uh, than today. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's and, the same as. And this is, so this is the one that was not quite made yet. It was uh, still getting finished, yep. and it's done three thousand miles now. Yeah, about about three thousand miles on the road. Yeah, that's, so that's quite impressive. And um, what's what's the kind of feedback so far? Really good. Awesome. Customer, customer loves it. Yeah. Wants it back as soon as possible so you can get, it, get driving it again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, ultra reliable. It's got a 66 kilowatt hour pack in there and they, wow. they've actually run it to empty and got 220 miles out of it. Okay. So, yeah. Decent. And 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds, something like that. Yeah, so the spicy pancake motor's still doing its stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's... Uh, does everything that we want it to. No, it looks smart. Want it to do. And uh, yeah, it's good to know that, yeah, after 3,000 miles, it's still going strong. And uh, another red beast in the corner. They're all red. We only yeah, work on red cars. Literally. <laughs> we need to paint the Land Rover. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't see many red Land Rovers unless it's at uh, the uh, fire service. So this, I think you spoke about this particular Porsche last time we were here. Yeah. And this is your good lady's uh, car, your wife's yeah, car? Yeah, it was a secret. Oh, it, was, right. it was a secret. It was a secret, um, yeah. And her birthday was April. Right. It's now January. <laughs> and it's still not finished. Ah. So it's, um, now it's become a sore point. It's supposed to be a gift to her for her 50th birthday. Right. And now it's just become a pain in the backside because it's like, when's my car going to be finished? Anyway. Well, 50 um, again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. And this is the small drive unit that's going in. So this. that small drive unit we just looked at. Right. Uh, is going to go in this, right? And this will be a test case for, for that. So wow. But no, this is beautiful. When it's done, you'll have to give us a shout because. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see it in action. When they're all done, right? Oh, absolutely. Everything seems to take an age. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it just? So uh, thanks for treating us to a cup of tea. It's a bit cold, a bit <laughs> cold and horrible out there, isn't it? It's January, right? So what do you expect? But no, thank you very, very much for showing us all the amazing stuff that's going on at Eco Classics. Hey, it's my pleasure, right? I, and you tell the story for us, right? Because I spend so much of my time 
in the workshop, mm. designing the stuff, and, and actually being very practical and hands-on. Yeah. And I don't particularly enjoy the social media stuff. So I don't, I don't post a lot. No. So we do a bit on the down at the barns and things. But. Yeah. Well, you know, any other time that you've got something exciting going on, then, yeah, give us a shout. But I truly believe that, you know, a lot of the stuff that you're doing is really, you know, pushing that. the boundaries and leading the way. And, and, you know, especially coming here last time, driving the Porsche, that was... It is still the best electric car I've driven. <laughs> okay. Definitely. Um, but, you know, I haven't driven the TDI yet. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to be amazing. <laughs> that's, uh, I'm sure it will be. Ralph, if you're watching, I'm sure it'll be awesome. I'm sure it will yeah. be. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. And uh, thank you for your time. No problem. Good man. My pleasure. Right, that's uh, it, Charge Heads, uh, Eco Classics today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please tune in for the next episode, which will be at Autosport. And that at Autosport, we'll have Nick's Foundation E's uh, race car. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of other electric, uh, exciting vehicles to check out. So I'll see you there.